that blockbuster lawsuit from Kanye West. The rapper's erratic behavior caused him to cancel 21 shows. Lance. Exclusive new audio of a Kanye West meltdown behind the scenes of Saturday Night Live. Kanye West had an epic meltdown, even for Kanye, backstage at Saturday Night Live. Good morning, Michael. You know, whatever the source of his celebrity, as a recording artist, Kanye West has made some of the most vital and significant popular music of the 21st century. That's part but not all of the reason why, when he starts talking, he gets people's attention. Kanye West is so prominent in today's society that hearing about him is unavoidable. I mean, even my parents are well aware of who Kanye West is. Whether it's from scandals, hearing him on the radio, or at a party, Kanye West is everywhere and he's extremely influential. If you're like me and listen to a good amount of hip hop, you can quite easily close your eyes and think of at least one of his album covers quite easily. For me, I think of this bear right here. Many others definitely come up, but I wanted to start with the infamous dropout bear. The thing is, Kanye almost has a creativity stamp with the completion of every single album. As stated in a previous video, album covers are the first part of an album that you lay your eyes on. It can really make you judge a book by its cover. We all know this album too well. Either you listen to it torrented on LimeWire or at a physical copy. College Dropout is one of Kanye's staples. Kanye was in school at the American Academy of Art, but later dropped out upon realization that he wouldn't be one of the greatest visual artists ever. The cover was directed by Eric Duvichel. He thought that it was interesting that Kanye wanted to depict the most loved and popular character at every college to be sitting down alone. The golden frame symbolizes Kanye's element of elegance to hip-hop, as many at the time had gangster-led images. The golden frames were actually taken from a 16th century book and put onto the cover of the album. The late registration design was by Brooklyn Graphic Design Studio, Morning Breath Inc. The dropout bear walks out through those massive Princeton doors which can be seen as a metaphor for the rap game. What is even more interesting is how within the physical booklet, the dropout bear is seen dozing off in class and continuously late, too busy daydreaming about being a star. When graduation came around, Kanye entered a new era he really started running shit. The graduation cover kicked off Kanye's relationship with the Kashi Murakami and continued with his dropout bear alias. Kanye also had a blog where an animated version of the graduation cover could be navigated through. To me, this cover depicts being launched into the real world after graduation. School is where you pick up a lot of the pieces and tend to discover who you are more and more each day. The booklet once again depicts the struggles of the real world, where Kanye is late to his graduation. As his DeLorean dies, he attempts to catch a cab, but ends up walking to the ceremony. The cover of 808s is the first of Kanye's albums not to feature the dropout bear. As you can see, the colors on the left represent his last album, Graduation, featuring work from Brian Donnelly, also no more for cause who has sold various famous works for upwards to millions of dollars. If that wasn't impressive enough, it features art direction from Virgil Abloh, who found it off-white only five years later. Kanye is seen with the same broken heart pin in many of his promotional photo shoots. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was approached a bit differently, but Kanye still continued the retirement of the dropout bear. To me, this album virtually changed this color red for me. The amount of times I've listened to this album makes me think, oh, it's that red. Just like The Wall or The White Album, literally nothing needs to be on the cover for me to recognize it. Once again, Kanye was able to get a world famous artist, George Kondo, to design the album cover. Where he didn't just make one, but actually multiple different paintings for the album cover. The portrait of Kanye was birthed when in their first session, Kanye blasts power, influencing the artist with Macbeth imagery, but highly being influenced by the song 21st Century Schizoid Man. The product was this painting right here. Kondo explained the next painting by saying, She's a fragment between a sphinx, phoenix, a haunting ghost, a harpy. And then Kanye is also in some sort of strange 1970s burned out backroom of a Chicago blues club having a beer. So far away from the real Kanye West that it's just a scream. Where this cover was actually instantly banned from both Walmart and Apple Music. 
The ballerina was influenced by Runaway, and the same idea bled both into the music video and the VMA performance, specifically by Kondo's wife, Anna. When she presented ballerina Sylvia Gulen to Kanye, Kanye became very attached to this idea, especially attaching the idea to the lyric, let's have a toast to the scumbags, where the ballerina is seen to be having a toast. The head with the sword is seen as layers of cubism and classicalism, a parallel vision to Kanye's music of different styles occurring simultaneously, explaining his expression as a freedom from exile, beheaded, yet strangely looking towards the camera with a loud expression. The final image mimics the Baroque era, 1600s architecture in a religious figure, while reflecting paranoia that is found on many of the tracks in the album. Simplicity, one of the few words that Ye tweeted upon the Yeezus album release. Kanye had no intentions of a debut single, or no other promotional tactics. He didn't even want the cover to take away from the music, thus creating a clear jewel case as the cover. One form of advertisement that Yeezus went through was the album being plastered within cities, with Please Add Graffiti captioned on top of the album. And then came The Life of Pablo. I remember the day that this cover came out very well, and in early to late 2016 where I listened to it over and over again. My first impression was holy shit, the mess, the scatter, the confusion. Nothing was parallel. It looked like the product of a quick paint session. The cover art was once again made by a commissioned artist, Peter de Potter, who takes images online and employs them into his own vision. Many claim to have a meaning to this album artwork, but Kanye left all of us with our questions unanswered. To me, it's clear that the artwork is very similar to Madonna's Nothing Fail. The two initial images of the woman in the family wedding creates a contrast, like a devil and an angel, two total different spectrums and ideas that Kanye enjoys to entertain. Ye was a twist for many. It was just too simple. The first album cover not to be directed by an artist, because Kanye fully made the realization that he is the artist now. The picture was literally shot on the way to his listening party. Initially, Ye wanted the cover to be his mother's surgeon, the man technically responsible for his mother's death. His texts about the cover prove an attempt for Kanye trying to achieve inner peace with the incident. But it's important to note that this wasn't in a negative way. His texts about the cover prove an attempt of Kanye trying to achieve inner peace with the incident. The statement, I hate being bipolar, it's awesome, is Kanye's response to his public complications with the media, which led up to the album release. It also once again shows an attempt of him coming to grounding terms with his bipolar disorder, learning to recognize and cope with his current situation. Kitsy Ghost dropped at the exact same time as Ye, bringing the art director all the way back to graduation with Takashi Murakami. Heavily inspired by his 2001 woodblock artwork called Manji Fuji, including the backdrop of Mount Fuji within the artwork. Kanye tweeted about the concept art, which clearly made an inspiration upon the final release. The concept ghost character is incorporated within the original artwork. Although Mirakami is Japanese, the letters on the left are actually Chinese. The two large Chinese letters in the top left say Handun, also known as Chaos, a character from ancient Chinese mythology. The quotation at the bottom left was written by a famous Chinese philosopher from around 300 BC, where the quote basically wants you to live your best, knowing that it is only because life is so precious that death becomes so important. As Yeezy season approached once again, we were presented with Jesus is King, bringing Kanye's fans great excitement after the disappointment with Yanni. The buildup and popularity of the recent Sunday service events Kanye held made it inevitable that it would influence an album. We were all teased with a track list but no album with this image right here. Although it seems straightforward, the gospel verse was definitely positioned accordingly, which reads, My enemies have set a trap for me. I am weary from distress. They have dug a deep pit in my path, 
but they themselves have fallen into it, which can be seen as a theme for Kanye, where in times others have deceived him but ultimately have fallen in the pit of hate that they created. During Kanye's listening party, he revealed the album cover while performing. The background clearly suggests a rural area, almost like an aside during Kanye's Sunday service performances, or even representing his Wyoming ranch purchased earlier in September. In a religious perspective, it's clear that the cover holds many similarities to Jesus' transfiguration in Mark 9. Revelation verse 7 can also be seen as a great influence, where it states, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. As much as I would love to say that Kanye is down to the right in the orange shirt, it has been proven before that he never really puts himself on his own album covers. Either way, the cover can be seen as being a servant of God. In Kanye's perspective, he no longer believes that he is a god. Ultimately, the cover creates the inspiration of letting go of one's ego, giving yourself up to the most high. Thank you guys so much for watching, please drop a like down below, and until next time.